So, I will basically do some mathematical preliminaries in this first lecture. Okay. Uh, there is something called Cauchy's quartz inequality. I do not know whether you are aware of it or not. Cauchy's quartz inequality. Suppose you have a 1 b 1 a 2 b 2 a n b n and such ordered pairs okay. and uh, what it basically says is that summation a i b i i is equal to 1 to n whole square is less than or equal to summation a i square multiplied by summation b i square. Now, you look at the slide. That means, the expression in the slide, the value lies between minus 1 and 1. Right? Okay. Now, let me just prove it. Uh, so, this is the statement and then the proof is the following. Uh, we know that a i x minus b i whole square, this is greater than or equal to 0 for all x and for all i is equal to 1 to n. Is it correct? A i x minus b i whole square is greater than or equal to 0, since this is the square term greater than or equal to 0 for all x and for all i is equal to 1 to n. I have n such things here. So, naturally summation i is equal to 1 to n a i x minus b i whole square it is greater than or equal to 0 for all x. Right? Okay. That means, summation a i square into x square minus summation a i b i into 2 into x plus summation b i square i is equal to 1 to n this is greater than or equal to 0 for all x. Am I right? Now, this is in the form of a x square plus b x plus c. Right? This is in the form of a x square plus b x plus c. Now, suppose a x square plus b x plus c is greater than or equal to 0 for all x, then what can you say about a, b and c? What can you say about b square minus 4 a c term? Can you say anything? No, b all the all of them are real numbers. So, b square minus 4 a c it has to be real, but can you say anything? Uh, 
you look at this, I am drawing a diagram here. A x square plus b x plus c greater than or equal to 0, that means for every x there are two possibilities, for every x this is a strictly greater than 0, that means the curve may be something like this, it never touches x axis, am I right? That is one possibility and uh, for some x it may be equal to 0, right. That means, the curve may be for exactly 1 x it is equal to 0 or can it happen like this? Can it happen like this? For 2 x it may be equal to 0. Can it happen like this? That cannot happen. First, this a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, it can have two real roots, right. And if it has two distinct real roots, then what happens is that in between those two real roots, the function takes negative values it cannot be like this. If you have two real roots that means, this is one root and this is one root, then it is going to be look like this, this will be, this will look like this. Okay. In between those two roots, you should get negative values. So, that means, either this case has to happen or this case has to happen this case means there is no real root, there is no real root means what can you say about b square minus 4 a c. If b square minus 4 a c is greater than or equal, if it is greater than or equal to 0, if it is greater than 0 then you are going to have two distinct real roots. So, b square minus 4 a c cannot be greater than 0, are you understanding? If it is equal to 0, then you are going to get exactly one root minus b by 2 a. So, b square minus 4 a c has to be less than or equal to 0. Are you understanding? b square minus 4 a c it has to be less than or equal to 0. Right? This mean implies b square minus 4 a c should be less than or equal to 0. So, b square means the square the square of this that is 4 times summation a i b i whole square minus 4 times summation a i square into summation b i square is less than or equal to 0, right or that means summation a i b i whole square is less than or equal to summation a i square and summation b i square. Is this clear? Now, the next question is when is this equal to 0? When is this equal to 0? This is equal to 0 when all these are equal to 0, right? All these are equal to 0 means a i x minus b i should be equal to 0 for all x, I mean 
a i x minus b i should be equal to 0. Okay. That means, a i x minus b i is equal to 0 for all i. That means, what x is equal to b i by a i for all i. So, that means, this has to be a constant x must be same for all i that means, b i by a i has to be a constant that is b i by a i is a constant ok. So, the equality will hold when b i by a i is a constant that means, what there is a linear relationship between b i s and a i, b i is equal to a constant times a i, b i is equal to some k times a i for all i. That means, if you look at this, you can look at that expression that is there on the board. If a i, if b i is equal to some k times a i, then uh, what will happen to the the quantity s a b? it is equal to 1, am I correct? It is equal to 1 or minus 1, can it be equal to minus 1? Suppose, k is a negative quantity, then that minus will appear in the numerator, and but it does not appear in the denominator. It is equal to plus 1 or minus 1. And uh, b i is equal to k times a i that means what? b i is equal to k times a i that means what? you have a vector a 1 to a m, a 1 to a m okay, and you are multiplying it by a constant k, then you will get the other vector b 1 to b m. That means, what actually they are the same vectors, the direction is actually the same, the magnitude is different, then the angle between them is either 0 or 180 degrees the angle between them is either 0 or 180 degrees, then cosine 0 is plus 1, cosine 180 degrees is minus 1. And this is the, this is linear relationship, but what it says is that the linear relationship you are making it go through the origin. If it does not go through the origin, then you will get a some constant plus some constant L, right. But since the constant there is no other constant here, this goes through the origin, right. Now, if you add that constant, that is B i is equal to some k times A i plus L. b i is equal to k times a i plus l, then what will happen to b bar? I think I will write here now.
B i is equal to k times a i plus l. Then what will happen to b bar? This is the mean of b. This is actually equal to k times a bar plus l. The mean of b, b i is that is b bar, b bar is equal to k times a bar plus l. Then b i minus b bar is equal to k times a i minus a bar. I am just subtracting this from this. Then b i minus b bar is equal to k times a i minus a bar this l and l is getting constant they are getting cancelled. Now, you have this form some b i is equal to some constant times a i only thing is that here we are subtracting the mean and we are subtracting the mean here. So, if there is a linear relationship between b i's and a i's with k and l then the correlation coefficient is plus 1 or minus 1. Is this clear? Then the correlation coefficient is plus 1 or minus 1. Please, doubts? There will be L divided by something, no? B bar is equal to K A bar plus L divided by number of examples. Here. Second, second, sir. L divided by something. When we will take B bar? Okay, we'll just see. So this step is not clear to you, right? Yes, sir. One over n summation B i i is equal to 1 to n this is b bar is equal to 1 over n summation i is equal to 1 to n k a i plus l right. You got it? Take care of it. Okay. So, when there is a linear relationship between the two variables, then the correlation coefficient is plus 1 or minus 1. But the converse is not true. Wait, 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 wait. When there is a linear relationship between the variables, then the correlation coefficient is plus 1 or minus 1. Suppose the correlation coefficient is plus 1 or minus 1, then also you can say that there is a linear relationship, but for zeros it is not true. When, <coughs> when the random variables are independent and the correlation coefficient is 0, but when the correlation coefficient is 0, you cannot say that the random variables are independent. Okay. I will also tell something that we will be using it uh, in the coming lectures, tell a fact. Okay. Suppose you have n such real numbers x 1 to x n and 
mean is x bar, this is the mean. We all know the formula of variance. Let us just say the formula of variance is equal to 1 by n summation i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square. Now, variance is supposed to give you what? Variance is supposed to give you some sort of a scatter of the data, how much of variation you have in the data. You might be wondering that why in order to measure the variation in the data, we are taking the difference between the values and the mean, we want to measure the variation in the data set. right? then why are we taking the difference between the values in the mean? How is mean entering into the picture? Have not you got this doubt? Have you understood what I wanted to say? Why are we taking the distance or the difference from the mean, when we want to measure the variation within the data set? How is mean coming into the picture? Okay. Now, let us see. Suppose, let us not take the mean, then what we will do? We can always do something like this. Are you understanding what I am trying to write? We take all possible such differences and then you take the squares and then we will divide it by some quantity here, that is a different thing. Okay. Now, let us just see what this is going to give us, this is equal to what I will do is x i minus x bar plus x bar minus x j whole square. Okay. So, now this is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n, summation j is equal to 1 to n. What do you have here? x i minus x bar whole square plus x j minus x bar whole square minus Okay. Now, what is this? Let us see summation i is equal to 1 to n. Let us take this summation j is equal to 1 to n inside. This is a term which is independent of j. So, what we are going to get? This is n times x i minus x bar whole square. Right? Now, summation j is equal to 1 to n x j minus x bar whole square. This is n times s square okay now what about the this one summation j is equal to 1 to n of this here 2 times x i minus x bar it is something independent of j so we can take it out summation j is equal to 1 to n x j minus x bar what is the value of that it's equal to 0 are you sure it is equal to 0? Summation j is equal to 1 to n x j minus x bar is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n x j minus summation j is equal to 1 to n x bar. Right? This is equal to n times x bar minus this is n times x bar. What is x bar? x bar is okay, i or j does not matter x i right. So, that is equal to 0. So, this is equal to 0. Right. Now, what will happen to this? Now, 
Now, we will take the summation i is equal to 1 to n inside, this will be n times summation i is equal to n 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square is equal to n s square plus So, this is basically nothing but 2 n square s square. So, basically you are going to get a quantity which is a function of s square. So, you need not take this, you can be satisfied with this. After all, this is a constant multiple of this, right. See, even if you look at this 2 n square s square, look at x i minus x j whole square, it occurs 2 times, one as x i minus x j whole square, another as x j minus x i whole square, right. Now, so that is occurring 2 times. So, in fact, totally how many terms are there here? n square terms and there is something that is occurring twice. So, that is why 1 by 2 n square. So, you need not we need not have to go through or look at this we can actually look at this by looking at this we are actually looking at this by looking at this we are actually looking at this i hope this is clear to you because this is a constant multiple of this we'll stop here